Good Tuesday evening, everybody, from the News Channel 3 home office backyard. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with the latest edition of News Channel 3's astronomy video blog called Skyblog 3. Got the old telescope out and ready to go for later on this evening. Some great pictures of Venus and Mars last night, including some views of the after supermoon. If you had a chance to see that between the cloud cover last night, beautiful conditions across much of the area for stargazing. The chances of rain did materialize last night just like we thought they would and more chances of rain possible by week's end. But until then, we've got some very nice conditions out there as we have some decently clear skies at House Onik for this evening. And should be great for getting out and taking a look around the Mid-South for stargazing purposes. Again, a great evening to get your kids and family away from the computer and the TV screens and everything else and go outside and take a look around and see what you can see, especially with a couple of events coming up into the course of the next couple of days and weeks. We'll be looking at some other events for the sky gazing community. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. Beautiful out here today. Temperatures very much on the mild side. A little bit warmer than it should be for this time of the year, but this time of the year we'll take what we can get, especially into November where we can get all sorts of things going on. If you'd like to know weather about, uh, about weather on other planets, study of which is called exometeorology or study of weather off planet somewhere else in the solar system there is weather on other planets uh, of the solar system and moons for that matter of those planets as well one of the best places you can go to for this is the REMS the remote environmental monitoring station as part of the curiosity rover which has been tootling around Mars now for quite some time. Temperatures in the teens, that's almost a heat wave for parts of Mars, as reported a couple of days ago. And if you'd like to follow more about this, all you have to do is go to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, part of NASA, and you can find out more about the Curiosity rover, where it's been, where it's going, what else is going to be happening in the near future, where it comes to missions and everything else that is going to be done. So if you'd like to know more about that, head to jpl.nasa.gov, and you can select on Mars the Curiosity Austin Rover and find out more about what's going on up there on the Red Planet. Speaking of which, if you take a look in the southwestern skies tonight, Venus at about 7 o'clock this evening will be just above the horizon. Mars will be up and to the left of there, so you can see Mars quite clearly for tonight. Assume you've got some clear skies out there. Opposite side of the horizon, the moon will be rising in the northeast around the time of the Pleiades rising, the Seven Sisters in and around Taurus. And if you haven't seen those before, it would be a great opportunity to take a look at that constellation coming up. There's some very good viewing of that. Again, an old scope like what I've got here or a pair of binoculars would be a very good idea. Tomorrow morning, very early pre-sunrise, you can catch Jupiter rising in and around the constellations of Pisces and just below Leo the Lion as it rises, and that's going to be, again, the best place to look for a meteor shower coming up. We'll talk more about that in just a little while. For tonight, not that much to be seen in the way of iridium flares. There will be other flares happening in the course of the next several days, including a couple of them tomorrow and another couple of them the day after that, and several more days worth of the flares happening. Again, that's that satellite, the, the collection of satellites, that brighten very quickly and then dim just as fast. They will flare in and then go back out again. Uh, all you have to do is be watching the sky at the right time, and they only last for about 15, 20 seconds at best. So this is something you really have to watch out for. If you've never seen one of these things, stay tuned. We'll tell you more about them as we go throughout the next several days and weeks. Tonight's satellite viewing, not that much on the horizon, unfortunately. The only thing you're going to be able to really take a look at, and you're going to need to be away from city lights to see this, as it's not going to be bright, a visibility of about 2, a positive 2, which, again, is not that bright. That's actually pretty dim. You have to get into the negative numbers for magnitude to be able to see this. What you're going to be looking at is for Tiangong 2, it'll be down close to the southwestern horizon from the west down to the southeast. And, again, this is going to be very dim, so it's going to be very hard to spot, especially around City lights. You're going to need to be away from city lights to be able to see this, and I'm talking far away from city lights, not just around the block or down this down the lane 
you're going to need to go someplace where these cannot uh, interfere with something that dim. You might even need a couple of binoculars just to be able to see something like this, so keep that in mind. Tomorrow morning, if you're going to be doing any searching for anything, Tiangong 2's counterpart, the now abandoned Tiangong 1, will be over the northwestern horizon, starting around and close to the Big Dipper and making its way down toward the northwestern horizon. This also will not be that bright. It'll be fairly dim, but hopefully you'll be able to see something since it'll be on the opposite side of sunrise, so something to be able to see there. A lot of events coming up into the course of the next several weeks including, uh, of course, the solstice, which will be occurring in just about uh, a little bit over a month or so, about a month and a week away from the winter solstice occurring. It's been a very fast autumn around here. You can also see, again, what's going to be coming up, the Leonid meteor shower into the course of the next several days. The Leonids will be peaking. The parent comet of the Leonids has a tendency to drop a lot of debris in its path. It orbits the sun once every 33 years, and as it does, it has been known to fire up what are called meteor storms of about 100,000 meteors per hour. Uh, people back in about 1833, if I'm not mistaken, said they had to keep their balance on something because the amount of stars made it look like uh, the planet was rushing forward. It would just give that illusion of motion. So something to think about there. If you'd like to see more about what's coming up in 2017, go to timeanddate.com. Good opportunity to see what's going on in and around the Mid-South area and points beyond. Sunrise, sunset, moonrise, and moonset. Time zones, all kinds of neat things about astronomical events. Again, that's timeanddate.com, one word. And get more information about some great opportunities for viewing stuff out there. Eclipses, don't forget about the big solar eclipse that's coming up in August of 2017. Really looking forward to that. We'll see how that goes. And more information, of course, we'll give you details on Skyblog 3 which we'll be posting here as often as we possibly can and keeping you updated as to find out what's going on uh, in and around the Mid-South area where it comes to astronomy purposes. Again, should be decently clear skies for tonight. No major problems being seen at this time, so if you have any opportunities to get out and do some stargazing, please do so. You're going to have, again, some clearer skies out there for the next several days until we get some rainfall by Friday, but always take the opportunity to go out and take a look around. The supermoon over the last several days, you may have had your fill of that, but the the good news is we did manage to convince a lot of people to get out and take a look at the night sky, which is something that a lot of people are not doing these days, sadly. So take the opportunity to take some stargazing time with your family if possible, and if not, just take a look around and see what's up there and be curious about stuff like that. Good opportunity to see what's around your universe in the local and not-so-local neighborhoods, and that's an opportunity that we will present to you every single time we do this video blog here for you called Skyblog 3. That'll wrap it up for this edition. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik from the backyard on what looks to be a very beautiful night coming our way. We'll have more details on the rest of your forecast on News Channel 3 with Tim and Jim up to News Channel 3 at 10. Don't forget about Todd Demers early tomorrow morning on Daybreak. And, of course, I'll have more on the forecast coming up on our exclusive video weather blog called Weather Overtime. That'll be coming up in just a little while at wreg.com slash weather. Thanks for joining me for the latest edition of Skyblog 3. Remember, when it comes to anything involving science or astronomy, keep looking up. Up.